In this video, I want to talk about an important geometric notion called congruence. It's a little bit like equality, but it's a little bit different. And we'll talk about the similarities and differences between them. And then I also want to talk about a couple other relationships between angles, relationships that two angles can have with respect to each other that turn out to be important and something that we're going to discuss a lot over the course of uh, this near geometry. <clears throat> So here I have two angles listed. I have angle A and angle B, and I have indicated that both of those angles have a measure of 60 degrees. Can we say based on this that angle A is equal to angle B? And the answer is interesting. Back when I was taking geometry in high school, the answer was, yeah, why don't we go ahead and do that? Uh, nowadays, we have a slightly different way of thinking about it, which I think is uh, a good idea. And that's to say that angle B and angle A have a lot in common, but they're not the same angle. They have different vertices, they're opening up in different directions, one's on the left, one's on the right. Uh, so it's not quite what we want to do to say that they're equal to each other. What I want to say is that angle A and angle B, I will say that they are congruent to one another. We're gonna define the notion of congruence in a little bit more detail later in the course, but for now it's just the idea that A and B have the same size and in some instances it's also important to know that they have the same shape. So not just lines can be congruent or angles, we will also talk about triangles and other shapes being congruent to each other. And the symbol we're going to use for this is going to be a little bit different. It's gonna look like the equality sign and then we're gonna throw, the fancy name for that is a tilde or you can call it a squiggle on top of it. All right, so an equal sign with a squiggle on top of it is the way that we're going to describe two angles or two line segments as being congruent to each other. All right, I want to be clear about this difference between congruence and equality though. <clears throat> so for instance, geometric objects like these two angles are gonna be congruent to each other. If I wanted to say that this 60 is equal to this 60, these two numbers are equal to each other, the way I might write that is that I would say that the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B. So this M in front of the angle sign means measure. So the measure of angle A is 60 degrees. The measure of angle B is 60 degrees. Those are numbers, so I can compare two numbers with the equality sign. But geometric objects, like angles, should be congruent to each other. Let me give you another example of this difference between congruence and equality. We can also talk about line segments. So if I have these two line segments, they might have the same length, the same distance between those two points. W, X, Y, and Z. All right, so once again, these two line segments aren't equal to each other because they're geometric objects and they have some differences. They have different endpoints. One is horizontal, the other is vertical. So I want to say W, X, the line segment is, sorry, is congruent to the line segment connecting Y and Z. And if I wanted to say this in a slightly different way, to say those two distances are the same, I would do that in a different way. I would say WX, if I write WX without the bar on top of it, what I mean by that is the distance between W and X. So the distance between W and X is a number, the distance between Y and Z is a number, and to say that those two numbers are the same, we're gonna use the equal symbol. 
So I hope you can appreciate the difference between them. So when we're comparing two numbers and seeing that those two numbers are the same, we're going to use the equality symbol. When we want to say that two geometric objects have the same basic structure, which will be different depending on if they're line segments, we're talking about distance. If we're talking about angles, we're talking about angle measures. And if we're talking about more complicated shapes, we're going to talk about their shape and size being congruent. We'll use the congruent symbol and the word congruent. All right. Let's talk about a couple other words that would let us describe the relationship between two angles. Let me draw. So we'll name these angles A, B, C, and D. All right. Now let's trace out for me angle B, A, C and angle DAC. So BAC is this bottom angle and DAC is this top angle. These two angles are next to each other. They share one of their sides, which is AC. So I'm going to say that these two angles are adjacent angles. They're adjacent angles because they're next to each other. The, the spaces that they, that they trace out are next to each other in the plane, and they have that one common side. An important thing to think about is that it's not just having one common side that makes angles adjacent. For instance, let's compare angle BAC, the bottom angle, and angle BAD which is the big angle made up of both of those small angles. So these two angles, they also share one of their sides. Both of those angles has AB as one of its sides, but we're not going to say that those are adjacent. Not adjacent because one of them is inside the other. Does that make sense? BAC is an angle that is inside angle BAD. And so that's not going to make these angles adjacent. Another really common idea that we have, and these two, I'm going to talk about them at the same time, is that if I have a right angle here, how do I indicate a right angle? I want to make sure I put in this bracket so that we know that, those, that that is exactly a 90 degree angle. If this angle is split in half, and so I have two angles, this one and this one, that put together form a 90 degree angle. I'm going to call those angles complementary. And a very related concept is that if I have a straight angle here, and once again, it's split into two pieces. So I've got this angle and I've got this angle. And if I put them together, I form that straight line. Or if I add their two measures together, I get 180 degrees. Those are called supplementary angles. All right. One thing from looking at these two uh, diagrams is that you can see that in this case, these two complementary angles are adjacent angles, and these two supplementary angles are also adjacent angles. But that's not necessary to have complementary angles and supplementary angles be adjacent. As long as you have any two angles anywhere in your plane, if their measures would add up to a 90 degree angle, then that's enough for them to be complementary. Again, if the angle measures add up to 180 degrees, whether the angles are adjacent or not, those angles are going to be supplementary. I like both of these words because uh, they both are well named. Um, if you think about what complementary means in the, in the real world, not meaning something, saying something nice about somebody, you might hear somebody say the example that I gave in class is that if you think about the movie Men in Black, so you have Will Smith being a pretty silly guy, 
and you have Tommy Lee Jones being a very serious guy. Now these are both funny men, but they're almost funnier when you put the two of them next to each other. And so one thing that you'll often hear people say is that in cases like that, Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith, they complement each other. And that doesn't mean that they're saying nice things about each other, it means that they work well together. All right, uh, what about the word supplementary or supplement? Does that have a meaning in the real world that you can think of? A lot of people find themselves thinking about like a vitamin supplement. Like if you don't get enough iron in your body by your normal nutrition, you might take a pill that has iron in it. And that supplements your diet to make sure that your normal diet and the iron in the, your pill fill out your entire need of how much iron you need over the course of the day. So both complementary and supplementary have this notion about things filling each other up, two things working together to fill something up. An important notion though is to remember which one of complementary and supplementary is talking about the right angle and which one is talking about the straight angle. And here's my secret for doing it. A supplementary angle starts with S, and when you put those two angles together, they form a straight line. When you put two complementary angles together, they form a right angle, and right doesn't start with C, unfortunately, but we could say that they form a corner, which does start with C. So hopefully this can, this is, you know, if you want to come up with a different clue to help you remember which is which, you're welcome to. But if not, you can borrow my idea that supplementary angles add up to a straight line, which is 180 degrees, and complementary angles make a corner, which is 90 degrees. All right, the last idea I wanted to bring up in this video, because it's another very common thing that happens where we talk about angles working together is if I have two lines intersecting each other like this, these are two straight lines, you might notice that those two angles look like they're congruent to each other. Uh, if you pulled out a protractor and measured it, you would see that they are. And if you drew a couple more intersecting lines, you might see that they always turn out to be that way. That's not an accident. Uh, we, will, we will be able to prove that in more detail later on in the year, that, that these two angles in this kind of shape, or you know, the top and bottom angles are another pair of angles that would be congruent to each other. But the way that we describe these angles that are opposite uh, when, you, when you make two uh, intersecting lines is that we're going to say that these are a pair of vertical angles. Now, as opposed to complementary and supplementary angles and adjacent angles, adjacent means next to, complementary and supplementary mean two things working together to fill up something. Vertical angles, uh, the people who are good at naming things in math took the day off when they came up with vertical angles because I hate this name. Because when you think about the word vertical, what are you thinking about? Well, you're probably thinking about a vertical line, which is a line that just goes up and down. And that doesn't describe this very well at all. The only reason that I can think of that they came up with the idea of a vertical angle is that if you think about this angle on the left, and if you think about this angle on the right, the only thing those two angles have in common is that they both have the same vertex. And that's the only thing I can think that these people were thinking of when they said, hey, let's call these vertical angles. Um, and it's not a good enough reason. So I give them a C minus for that. But at any rate, uh, recognizing vertical angles when you see them in diagrams is going to be really important to us as we go through the course. Um, because uh, recognizing that these angles are congruent is going to help us very much when we go to prove that two triangles are congruent to each other if they've got a pair of angles that are vertical angles. So let's review what we 
covered in this video. So we talked about congruent angles. We also talked about congruent line segments. We talked about adjacent angles. We talked about complementary and supplementary angles. And we talked about vertical angles. Hopefully you have some appreciation of when we use congruence versus equality in a statement. Um, we're gonna have plenty of time over the course of the year um, to, um, to talk about this and see this in more detail. Um, so if you didn't pick up the nuances quite yet, don't worry about it. And also, uh, when you see complementary and supplementary angles, when you see those words and see those diagrams, hopefully you remember which word goes with which diagrams. Complementary angles form a corner and supplementary angles form a straight line.